What's up guys? My name is Nathan. Welcome back to the Barefoot Garage. Today, we're in somebody else's shop. We are visiting our friends at Retro Renos and we're replacing the axle on this 13 foot scam. <laughs> guys here's the scamp we're working on tonight as you can tell this isn't my garage and we got somebody new this is dan from retro renos tell us about retro renos tell us about the scamp we're working on yeah retro renos we take vintage campers and bring them back to life so um here it is is a 1980s uh, style scamp it's a 13 foot and today we're going to be bringing uh, a new axle in and go ahead and replacing it so nathan tell us what tools we're using and uh, what we're going to be looking at all right let's jump over the bench and take a look at the tools guys this is what you need to replace the axle in your scamp this should apply to a 13 or 16 foot scamp you're going to need some device of cutting i prefer a grinder you're going to need cutting discs and probably some grinding discs these are uh, flat wheels from bench mark abrasives highly recommend that you will need something to measure how level your camper is so either a bubble level ideally or better get an angle finder you'll need tape measure and something to mark with. You're also gonna need eyes and ears to protect yourself while you're removing the old axle. You're gonna make some marks, make some measurements as you take it off, and then it's gonna be time to weld the new one on. As you can see here, we've got our new axle from Skimp, and we'll go through that before we put it back on the rig. Now let's take a look at the welding equipment we're gonna need. Action. All right, so this is our welding setup. This is a very simple, pretty inexpensive setup. Uh, this is a Miller 130 XP. I am gonna run it with gas. This is Argon CO2 mix. I prefer this over the flux core, uh, but if you have, you get in a pinch, you can use the flux core. We're also going to talk about doing this job where you do everything but the welding. We just have a mobile welder come to your house and we'll explain what you need to tell them to do that. So you need a good set of welding gloves. You need a nice high quality welding helmet. It does help if it has an eagle on it. Hello. Um, and something that you can weld mild steel with. Could be done with a stick welder. This is a MIG. That is my preference. If you want to get fancy, you could do it with a TIG welder as well. I wouldn't attempt this with an oxy torch or anything like that. So MIG welder is your preference. You can get a MIG welder from the Chinese import store for 400 bucks if you really want to. Uh, or borrow one from a friend. So this is the welding setup you're going to need. Now let's take a look under the camper. So now we've taken a look at all the tools you need for this job. The first step is to get your scamp on a nice level piece of concrete. You can do this in the dirt, but I really don't recommend it. You want to be able to get this level front to back. So the way that we did it is we actually uh, lifted up the front with the jack stands in and then used a hydraulic jack on the rear bumper. And we're trying to make sure that this floor is as level as possible. We want to be able to get good measurements vertically and horizontally off our axle. So let's jump underneath and take a look. Welcome to the underside of a scamp, 13 foot or 16 foot. This is your axle. So this is what's called a torsion axle. There are no coil springs, leaf springs, it's a rubber torsion. So there's a piece of rubber in here that fits around a bar. And basically the rubber allows the axle to flex. It provides both the dampening and the weight carrying capacity. It's a very unusual design. The other thing that's unusual about this is as you can tell, the wheels are here and the axle is here. So it's what I would call a leading edge. Very unusual style deal. Um, not something you see in a lot of other applications, but it works really here from a packaging perspective. So you have your solid beam coming across. You have a plate on both sides that is welded onto the frame. And then your little arms start from here in the center of the beam and they travel upwards um, up to where the hub and everything is located. So when we go to replace this axle, the goal is to put it in exactly the same place. So make sure that you've taken the measurements or you've called SCAMP with your serial number and make sure that they send you the, the correct parts. The main thing that matters is the bolt pattern and the difference and the dimensions from the flange here to the flange there. So we're gonna go ahead and pop off one of the wheels and I'll show you what needs to be cut to remove this. So Dan, tell us why somebody with a camper like this needs a new axle or when that might be. 
Yeah, so there could be many reasons of why you need a new axle, but um, one is safety. So making sure that your camper is safe on the road. Um, if you are feeling that you're feeling every bump and your camper is feeling every bump, you will know that um, it's probably time to replace an axle. If you see your rim in your wheel well and the rim is going under the wheel well, it's time to replace it, your axle. Um, also, just in the travel of in everything inside of your camper, if it's feeling every single bump and the only thing that's absorbing it is the tires, then you're gonna have a problem um, down the road and things are gonna start breaking like cabinets and other bolts will start loosening up. So it's probably time to start uh, getting a new axle or thinking about getting a new axle. Now that we have the wheel removed, you can see that the arm is traveling up and it really should be level at best. Now remember, there's no weight on the axle at all. If this thing was way loaded or you had 10 people in there, it should travel up like that, but it doesn't. It has way, way only down travel at best. And it really, I'll be honest, I'm pretty sure it's totally seized up. There is no travel in this in any way. So good candidate for a replacement axle. Now it's time to start thinking about taking the axle out. So from the front side, there is a weld here that needs to be cut. There is a weld here that needs to be cut. There's one on the back side right here, and then there's one on the back side up underneath here. So this should be pretty easy to access depending on what layout scamp you have. What layout is this? Layout one. This is layout one. This is much easier than the Rhino we did. You can see that here. but this is gonna provide a lot of access for us. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark here on the frame as a point of reference for the ends of our axle bracket right here. And that's just a rough mark. I'm also gonna go ahead and take my tape measure and measure forward from the front bracket all the way up to this bulkhead. And I'm gonna call that 18 and three sixteenths. So that's the number we're looking for when we go to put this thing back in. Make sure that you record that before you start cutting and then you'll be in good shape. It should match side to side. If it doesn't, uh, make sure that you have a good point of reference on both sides to get. pretty smoothly with the cutting here. So this weld goes here and then along this seam. So you can cut this way and cut this way, no problem. There's a small tack on the bottom corner. There's also one right here. All those are pretty easy to cut. The one that is a little bit troublesome is right there. This weld, so we get light in the camera, goes from here, here, and underneath. So this is one that you're gonna need a reciprocating saw or a torch so you can cut this way and ideally cut straight through like this. You really can't cut in this direction because that's the floor and you don't wanna punch through that. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this one here. That should be our last one. You really need to get it about 90% cut and then you can use a pry bar and cut the last one. But try and get to it and cut it right up. Bye bye actually. <laughs> See ya. And if I need a new axle, what is the best place to get that? So if you go to scamptrailers.com, um, reach out to them and tell them what's, what size you have, what your VIN number is. They'll get, send you the exact axle that you need. You can reach out to Retro Rentals or your local weld shop, and they should be able to help you out and uh, get you a new axle uh, burned on real fast. And we will put the link for both scamp.com and Retro Rentals in the description so you guys can check it out.
All right, guys, that is all for the Barefoot Garage installment of Scamp Axle tonight. You can see we've got the Scamp prepped. There's Mr. Retro Ren himself in the background. We are gonna leave you guys off here with the frame clean, the axles clean, and ready to go back in. So come back next week and see part two of the Scamp Axle install. As always, drop us a comment. Let us know what you're working on in your Scamp. Let me know if you wanna get connected with Retro Renos. You can always follow us between episodes at Barefoot Garage Jacks on Instagram. See you next time.